Welcome! Today I will present a use case of a new tool in WinPro, the Load Containment Optimizer. When the positioning of turbines is already fixed or decided upon, you can still ensure that your lifetime constraints are met of new and existing turbines. How does it work? You can still control the operation modes of turbines and we found a way to optimize the different operation modes of different turbines for different wind speeds and for different wind directions. In this way we can minimize AEP loss while ensuring that the constraints are met. For the use case I prepared a little site here in Apparados da Serra sample project. I have this VTG area here and I have a set of four existing turbines, all Nordex turbines. For a little investigation of the site itself, I ran a layout optimization with lifetime constraints. First to get a good idea of the layout itself, of an ideal layout here without too many constraints. I uh, just ran it without the existing VTGs and if we assume we want to play seven turbines the ideal layout would be more or less starting from the lower left corner and going to the upper right. If we consider existing turbines however we cannot even find a <coughs> solution in the highest operation mode for seven turbines. The second highest or the highest possible layout would actually be 48 megawatt hours with four VTGs placed. And the pattern is also quite different. It differs quite a lot from the layout without existing turbines. So next I created um, a layout of new turbines that follows more or less the pattern of the lower left to the upper right by avoiding slightly the existing turbines a bit and following the terrain. So the plan is to place seven new turbines uh, with this very low distancing of 500 meters here indicated. So you can see that it is quite close for this use case. We take this extreme example. In reality, there will probably never be such a close spacing, but who knows. So, what do we need to start a load containment optimization? It is the turbines and it is the climate. We accept sidress files as climate and we need turbine configurations. Every turbine here has some information that we need to fill in. We have a desired lifetime of 20 years in this case. We have a design class set of 1A and we have a turbine configuration here. A turbine configuration is a pairing of power curves with noise data and with load data, so load response models. If you only want to run this low lifetime optimizer, then you don't need noise data. But if you want to combine it with the noise containment optimization, you also need the noise data. So I will keep it for now. It is also possible to create generic load data here and override the data. This turbine configuration was actually created like this because it is a made up turbine that we use for this demo. Ideally, however, you would want to use the load response model provided by the turbine manufacturer of your choice. So you need to make the same decisions for existing turbines, just a little steep peak here. 
So we have the design class of 1C, we have a desired lifetime of 18 in this case, and we have also an auto created turbine configuration. Now we can go in and use the new tool optimize load modes. I have a little example here, but I will start from scratch just to show how everything is working. So first we select our resource, it's a CITRUS file. You could also download GASP here for convenience. Then we decide what VTGs we want to use. In this case the seven turbines that are already set up and the existing four turbines, they are already correctly listed here. And in the first example, I will overrule the desired lifetime that we saw in the VTG objects with 20 years for all, just for the first case. Then we need to decide for some load settings. So we can also use the design class from VTG object, but we wanted to use the same for first run anyways. So in this case, I will use 2B and check the IC design load case also for startup, shutdown and parked. In this window here, you can see the unique turbine configurations used for the different turbines. For example, we can select another turbine configuration with only shutdown for turbine 1 and then we see both of them in this list here. But let's just assume that we only want to use the same turbine configuration for all turbines and uh, we have seen that the turbine configurations are okay to use. So now we we'll just add a strategy and keep everything in uh, default modes for now. Just a little run through. Here we can choose the binning setup for the optimization. So for wind speed we say that uh, we want to start at 3 meter per second and that the bin size is 3 meter per second uh, 2 and we in total we have 7 bins. For wind direction we have a standard here of 12 bins with 30 degrees each. The other turbines you can use in the default for now too. And let's see what it is doing. In this little overview here you can see what the one is doing. You can see it is being performed and uh, in this column you see the AP loss in uh, absolute numbers and in relative numbers and here we can see how many load and AP calculations are being done. And uh, what I also have not managed, so managed to, to say so far is the sensors we used for this optimization is the blade sensors, but this can be extended to mast and uh, other components as well. What we can also see here is our initial lifetime of uh, the turbines. If we had not applied any curtailments, then the worst case would be that uh, we had 9.73 years for this turbine here and only 13.4 years for this turbine. So there's actually quite a lot of attainment needed, I assume. Um, but that is also no wonder because you saw that the distancing is quite low. And this second column here says what lifetime we want to achieve. And the first column says what is the calculated lifetime after optimization. In the AP loss we see now that the total AP loss is a little bit less than 6% for all turbines. And if we only look at new VTGs it is above 10%. But talking about losses here 
we can extend this a bit we also have something indicating how much production gain you have potentially by not losing these years here for example here we lose more than 10 years of fatigue lifetime or six percent uh, or six years in this case so if you accumulate the AEP that you generate in those years where you miss this gap to 20 years we actually can calculate it as a gain so a little bit more positive so in this case we have more than 108 percent plus so to say let's go into the different turbines now to see what has been actually the been the result of it so turbine one has this constellation of proposed modes which is uh, not highly curtailed but let's go to one of the turbines that had only nine years of lifetime so this looks quite uh, different already there's containment for all wind directions and in this case we also have a shutdown and some mode 4 okay the last time almost has no containment and here we have some mode 4 and for turbine 3 actually we have quite a lot of shutdown from 300 to 330 degrees all right that was scenario one in our second scenario we assume that we have additional information from the park owner of the existing turbines so we go in and uh, explore a little bit how they look like turbine one and turbine two have both the design class of 1c and uh, we have design class of 1a and 16 years of lifetime and 1a and 18 years of lifetime for three and four so now we want to use this information we simply add another layout give it a bit more speaking name default settings and use from utg objects we just uh, overrule the desired lifetime defined in the new vtgs and we will consider the lifetime of existing turbines but this time we will not do this check here where we overrule the desired lifetime of existing vtgs also we use the design class from the vtg object and with that we just keep all other settings the same and start the optimization. <coughs> the new design class will be shown in the initial lifetime. Here it will be different. Yes, it is only 7.17 in this case. And also the desired lifetimes here are used from the VTG objects themselves. So we have to climb up in total from 7 to 19 in this case and 13 to 18 in this case leading to a higher loss than before. But uh, how do the different uh, containment schemes look like? There's quite a lot of shutdown now in Turbine 1 which was not curtailed too much in the first place. Let's have a quick comparison. Yeah, there was only a little bit and also much more shutdown for the other turbines. This of course leads to a higher AP loss. For new turbines it is actually 28% but considering that the design class of the existing turbines is quite low well, now with the 1C and 
also that the distancing is very low I think we get a quite good result with 28% here what else is needed to get a permission to plan this so first of all we need to ask the manufacturer if we can implement these plans here let's assume for this scenario that we got feedback that the binning uh, granularity is actually fine and can be handled but that there are a little bit too many different curtailments for example here is a swap from mode 0 to mode 3 to mode 2 2 and then 0 again and then up to 4 in that direction that are maybe too many rules for that manufacturer so now we will add one strategy where we want that to be more blockwise with fewer rules and there's an easy way to handle this we can just increase the maximum percentage of bins changed here and include a higher AP or contiguity factor which penalizes these changes from mode 1 for example to mode 0 let's give it a try We want to see the progress of all of them. And I am curious now how the result looks like. The lifetime here is slowly climbing up. And only half a year is missing, less. And here we go, we have a strategy, 18% loss compared to 15. So our containment schemes now come with the AP deficit, but we see that the containment schemes are much more block-like what is what we intended. Also for the second turbine, the third turbine, even the fourth turbine. So all these turbines look very much blockwise and this will be no problem to implement for the manufacturer. So in today's use case we covered both the showing of the new features of the new tool and we covered the use case with two or actually three scenarios. and. Uh, this will also be included in the sample project that will be available for download so you can reproduce the results and tweak the parameters a bit for your purpose and see what the tool is capable of if you have feedback or have wishes for future implementations for this tool please let us know otherwise i will wish you a happy day and uh, see you next time